And we're back. Hey, everybody. Uh, and we're Howdy, returning cool to... Kids. We're returning to Major 3, part... The... Two, the two time. Five. Uh, uh, anyway, so yes, uh, we continue where we left last off, left bleh, last left off in where in which uh, it was revealed that uh, the mysterious uh, vampire who was meeting with us was actually Major Tom, timeless character from the first Major game, and also he's uh, he's the baby mom, baby daddy of uh, of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of MCA and also of uh, of um. Uh, what the fuck's his name? Shit. Um, God damn it, I can only remember the name Nero gave him. Buck. That change. Buck. Buck from uh, Major 2, who is also MCA's half-brother. Oh my god. The they Red play Wolf. a sound effect like this. Tom, Tom, Tom. Bum, bum. Anyway, so uh, let us uh, continue as we figure out what the plan is to actually try and uh, deal with all these crazy crazy SOBs. Okay. So then we all go into the... Tom starts drawing a very poorly uh, poorly drawn diagram of the U.S. Um, but, you know, what's basically there is the different states. Um, you're currently in Mass, mass Hatch assets because of course you are hold on probably should have readied this in the downtime but that's fine it's all right there so anyway the button to play the um, music. Mm -hmm. he shows off where y'all are at which is in washington dc and then he points that in North Maryland sort of area. Like uh, a, a city there. I can't remember the name of, of, of the city that was the stopping point. Regardless, Baltimore. he indicates that... Hmm? Was it in Baltimore or where was it? Um, it might have been Baltimore. Baltimore. Anyway. Um, okay. I was in Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, you gotta do it with a Baltimore accent. Oh, I found it. Uh, yeah, it was in Baltimore. Hell yeah. Uh, so he indicates that coming from around the Delaware area, so um, you know, from the uh, east, he indicates that uh, B should have, uh, is making her way towards Baltimore from uh, that way, from the east. And then he sort of draws out a loose... Uh, path of where the the troop is heading and you know, he, he does an explanation that they're probably going to be going a longer distance around in order to stave off the suits ultimately he's going to make it there because um, he knows that Alan would not pass up the opportunity to make a giant musical number right with the last remaining people he has. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So what I'm thinking here is, is that we split up, both of you. Um, there's probably going to be smaller conflict between the two groups, but the main... The main goal here is to get both B and Alan to agree to a, a truce, essentially. Well, that should be easy. Yeah. Right. <sighs> All right. Well, you think Alan will actually listen to you? No. Amenable is he to talk? I, I'm not a hundred percent sure how open he is, but he's kind of always expressed kind of delusionally this weird view on B, where he thinks they're still friends this whole time. So I think so long as we put in perspective of 
her doing it, her doing this out of friendship. It might work. All right. Well, that's assuming that B has already assassinated him somehow. But I don't know. He's pretty hardy, so I B's assume gonna he's going to want to kill you know, him herself if she can. Yeah. We'll see. Well, um, that does go ahead and give a uh, a way to get at least get her there. It's true, though. I don't so, know. Like, what you're saying is, is that we get them in the same room and then just sort of keep them at arm's length so that they can. Uh, well, if we're gonna go. Talk to we might as well try the bridge of his nose. Yeah. No, just get her into the right location. If yeah. we can feed information to her to, you know, actually get her into a place where we can, you know, make a meeting happen and get her prime duty for that and bring her down from murder range point, we at least have a way of moving her to the area that we want. Right. That's that's a good idea. Well, we're going to try and get B to do anything. It's probably going to have to you know, come from someone who she trusts. And right now that most, as far as people who she trusts, who we can actually reach, uh, are concerned, we pretty much have only one real option. Uh, all looking at you. Yeah. She, uh, sighs and says, Delhi is, uh, you know, reasonable. And, you know, B's about as close to her as she is to anyone. She shrugs. I think I can talk to her and maybe get her to, you know, talk with B and we can maybe work it that way. That's probably a good idea. Um, did any of you else have an idea? And then Adam's like, uh, Ad- Adam uh, is like, well, not really. I just, I'm, I'm just worried how my folks tie into all this. And then, and then um, Tom responds with a, "You're probably not gonna. You're probably gonna have to jump away from your folks for a little bit." I know they probably that uh, well they hate me, but. I think it's better to keep them safer and away from all of this. Fran speaks up. Why do we have to, um... Why do we have to even include any of these people? Well... If we don't, it's going to be very difficult to get them together, and if there's going to be even the slightest chance of us actually managing to talk to, getting anyone to talk, not that I'm saying there's much of a chance of that happening, but we'd need to get them close enough to actually speak to each other before that could happen. Well, no, we don't even need to have them talk. MC, I, I, I already taught you about the method, right? Yeah. We have one... Ace in the hole. One giant ace in the hole. How do you mean? And she draws a hurricane coming up from the south of of the east coast. That. Uh, M- MCA frowns and looks at. I don't you know, friend? I appreciate the the. Uh, the suggestion, but I'm not 100% certain how a hurricane is going to help us, you know, sort out the, the, the problem. Look, we don't have to go to Baltimore. Fuck. We don't have to go to any of those places. We could jump straight to the end of the race. What I'm saying is, if we head to Boston, in a few days' time, the hurricane's gonna hit. At the end of a race... At the end of all this, and we create as much drama as possible, then we might be able to perform a miracle strong enough to to go back in time, even or something. I I know it's still on the theoretical level, but based off of everything that I've been studying and learning about it, heck, heck even you've been using it creatively enough. I, 
we can probably manufacture a miracle big enough to just sort of go back in time and undo this before it even happens. We don't even have to worry about B or Alan. Heck, they, they won't even have to fight at all. Maybe they'll still be friends. Maybe even still have your family. And MCA kind of glances at, uh, at, uh, uh, at Tom and her face hardens and she looks back and says, well, at least part of that sounds nice. Yeah, I'll... All we have to do is just go back and kill Blue Sky. She, she stops and looks at it. Kill Blue Sky? It's, we go back to 30 years, maybe 1950s, early 60s, and, you know, we go to Mallory and we go to Blue Sky and, I you don't know. know if... I, I mean... One, I don't think that's going to be enough to stop all of this. I mean, Blue Sky isn't—he's a big piece of the puzzle, but I don't think he's the the one and only one. And besides, exactly that, why we take them all out. We we take both those groups out, and then we sort of set up chess pieces in a favorable way to where none of it even happens. You're talking. You're not just talking about killing Blue Sky. Then you're. This would be killing everyone related to that project. Like, in order to ensure that, like, they didn't, that no one was able to pick up the pieces, we'd have to pretty much kill everybody involved. Your point? That's a, that's a lot of blood. Yeah, but it's more than that. You're talking about becoming the problem. No, it, I'm not saying we're becoming a problem. We step back, we just remove the problem and prevent a new one from being created. Right, and when things inevitably go wrong and we have the power and we're the ones in the shadows? Who's to say that we're going to be doing anything wrong? We can create a utopia. Well, not not a utopia, but just a better world for everyone. We'll just be passive observers, you know, sort of making arrangements from the, from the background. It sounds like Blue Sky you're talking to me. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lee leans forth. Fran, I don't trust anyone with that power. I don't trust me with that power. Well, and maybe you shouldn't be involved in that. But I, I'm pretty sure MCA has the moral alignment enough for her and I to do it. I don't know if I am alright with the idea of killing an entire group of people just to maybe... It's for the ultimate good. You're saving millions. Theoretically. Like... Millions, MCA. Billions, even. You think. You think. You imagine if we kill the... If we went back in time. If we can go back in time and kill these people kill a lot of people then we would end up in a situation where like things would not just you know turn out the same way anyway what's to say that things don't always happen for a reason that they they wouldn't just occur again because that's the special thing about the method reality warping just changing everything That's. I don't know. It's a big gamble, and those stakes are incredibly high. And if we fail, then then not only will we not be able to fix the problems of of that we're facing today, but you know we'd also be just allowing them to to go spiraling out of control. It's we we'd be gambling everything on a on a on a chance that we could go back and then... It's not a maybe, chance, it's a calculated... The, it's, it's a the calculated theory. gamble, it's still a gamble. Yes, but and it's too yeah, complex it's, of a system. But it's easier than going about and trying to talk to a bunch of wild cards out of their bullshit when you know fair fucking well that they are not going to even listen to you. They're not going to care. They're not going to care. They're out for blood. That's what happens when they're in the position that they're in. 
the position you want to be in. <laughs> I don't want to be the head of an organization, though. I don't want to be in the spotlight like these the, these people. I'm not Alan. I'm not B. I'm not any of these people who try and be the center of it all. I'm trying to be this hero among everyone. To be seen as a god among everyone. No. What I'm saying is, is that to everyone else, we don't exist. And with our actions, these organizations won't have the opportunity to either. And you trust yourself to be able to wield this power with with moral certainty? I trust it with a fair fuck more than anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to so, sorry, it, big, big ambulance. It, yeah. it, it le leans forward. I'm going to bet that's exactly what Alan thinks. No. I don't think that's what Alan thinks. And, and see, and nods like maybe, maybe. Uh, and Mallory. Yeah, the, the others may be. Alan, I imagine, mostly just thinks that he's really goddamn cool. Whatever. Sounds to me like you're trying to ignore the past, to erase the past, to make the same damn mistakes. I don't expect you to understand. You know what? Maybe I should just... You know what? How about this? I'll let you do your your plan. Alright? You can do your plan. And if it works, it works. I won't have to do mine. But... You know... If I succeed then you won't even be here. You'll be happy, and, you know, everything will just sort of be better off. You won't even realize that it's happened, but, you know? Fuck. So, what I'm saying is, I'm going to leave now. Hold on. Before you go, Fran... Uh, MCA takes out a, a note a pad and, and scribbles something on it. Here. It's a, there's a phone number on it. You end up in trouble. Call that. I don't agree with your plan, but I don't want you going off without any sort of backup. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll keep that in mind. And uh, she takes it, and then, um, and and while she takes it, she actually passes off a, a thing to you, um, and closes mm -hmm. your hand around it before uh, before leaving out the front. And um, so suddenly you feel as though a couple of minutes have passed, but you don't really see what direction she's actually gone or how long she's sort of been gone. Mm -hmm. But she's gone. <laughs> There's some. Um uncomfortable and then power of hers is unsettling yeah and see I rubs her uh, her her temples again this whole goddamn situation is I don't Shit. even know yeah Every every step forward we make seems to just bring us a mile back from our end goal. I do have to say, she was right about one thing. Yeah. Lee goes ahead and taps on the picture of the hurricane that she drew. That is a lot of energy and a lot of drama. That's plan B. Yeah. And if uh, if things don't not the way out, she's thinking, I don't think. But yeah. there's enough in there to affect major change. MCA kind of looks uh, kind of gives uh, Lee a uh, an unreadable uh, glance, just sort of like 
and then nods and says, yeah, I guess if it comes to it, that's always going to be there. <laughs> Adam, Adam's like, God, we're going to all die. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it was looking that way uh, pretty well. Okay, so get the leader of a secret organization and the most narcissistic actor ever to grace the face of the planet together, try to keep them from killing each other, or work it to some other way in our advantage. Take down a person who... What was it? Right. Uh, who goes ahead and messes with memories and one of the leaders of the largest megacorps on the planet. It's not going to be easy. Oh, no. right. And we also need to dismantle a secret branch of the U.S. government. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lee uh, it starts baring his teeth in a wolf smile <sighs> well I can't say it's not going to be interesting now we're going to need a vehicle yeah we are and uh, <laughs> staring at Adam. <laughs> no, no, he, he looks over at Adam and goes, and no offense, Adam, but I don't think we can all fit on your bike. Oh, God. Oh, my. Well, I guess they'll kind of thank me later when they're not dead. <laughs> um, it's that or steal a police car. I'd prefer the prior. Yeah, me too. <laughs> It seems like an idea. All right. So, we had actually on that. Does anyone know if the taxi companies in this city use Crown Vicks? Uh, uh, MCA shrugs. I am not from this country. What the fuck is Crown Vicks? Uh, Crown Victoria. It's uh, the car that is like the classic police car. Most uh, taxi services actually use uh, old police cars. I would assume yes. Trapper. Well, it's DC, so maybe. Well, in that case, I think I can figure out how to get us a key. And just drive away with a taxi. Oh. Yeah. See. The thing that you might not know is that, generally speaking, and uh, at least starts sitting back and, uh, you know, he, he's half got the criminal face, half got the lawyer face on, or paralegal face on. The thing that you might not know is specifications for police uh, vehicles are something that can be gotten from the Freedom of Information Act. That includes the fleet key, because they're all key to luck. Generally speaking, what will happen is the taxis in a city will be the police cars that have gone out of service because, you know, they still got life in them, but they're not as good as they are. They don't change the fleet keys on those. Because we're in a city that has a known fleet key. We can go ahead and get one of those made up at a hardware store, walk over to a taxi cab, and drive away with it easy as you please. Uh, MCA looks to the others well what do you think we'll probably need to do a bit of a spray job on it just to obscure where it came from but it's doable or we can steal your family's car <laughs> MCA looks at Adam like Dude, this one's this one's on you. This is I, I feel like this is one of those comedy moments of like 
everyone's staring at him and it's like zooming in and there's like music and then hard cut to them pulling out in their in his in his uh in his dad's car um with like with the the uh the tarp flying off and like you see fireflies everywhere and then <laughs> leaves him in the driver's seat looking over at him just couldn't resist the leather seats could you I'm gonna die after this. <laughs> Nonsense! You might die before it. Yeah, look on the bright side. We might all be dead by the time we uh, we reach Baltimore. Comforting. Eh, Just... Don't. <laughs> if you're dead, you don't have to worry about anything. It's the maimed that's the real big problem. Just try to keep the speed limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, as you, uh, just as a, a layer of detail, this is a, um, this is a, like a pickup truck sort of thing. There's a big flatbed in the back filled with shit, and, yeah, and then, um, and then, uh, Adam starts to turn on the radio, or, well, I guess MCA would probably be the kind of person that'd be like, let's turn on the radio. She turns on the radio, and none of you hear the thump. On the back, in the back of the uh, of the truck bed. Uh, yeah. How much time do we have left? That, that, it's only been twenty minutes. Oh damn! Yeah. So we uh. We, we can we can call it an early episode and and just make it a shorty. Uh, you know, after after like a, a, a near half hour episode is hardly the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Um. Like, yeah, because I feel like this would be a good stopping point for for yeah. stuff. That's okay. pretty true. So in that case, uh, we'll see you guys next time as we drive into Baltimore. Good yeah. morning, Baltimore. Yeah, baby. Okay, and anyway, so yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Glad to be back. Uh, we'll be right back. See you in six soon. months. And then, uh, and then we'll be... <laughs> Going down to Baltimore Town. Cue the wire music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, catch you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>